In this video, I take this random dude and turn him into a superhero. I've had this idea to do a figurine for a number of years now, but unfortunately I didn't quite have the right equipment for it. Then out of the blue, Revo Point approached me and said, Hey Geek, we've got this 3D scanner that would like you to try out. And this sponsorship really got me excited. Revo Point supplies everything you can possibly need to get you started. Starting off with the turntable, there's the tripod, of course the cabling you need to connect that head unit, also some daylight filters if you're scanning outside. In the bottom of the box, which I almost miss, you get a velvet pouch and also this glass plate. And what that is, is a calibration plate. Of course, if you're going to calibrate something, you need a whole bunch of markers and that happens to be on the opposite side of that plate. Once you finish using it, it just a matter of slips back into that velour safety pouch and stores away. Let's check out this Revo Point Inspire 2 3D scanner. On the back of it is the start pause button. It also has the connection power indicators and the USB type C connection port. Also the tripod mount is at the bottom of the unit. On the front we have the projector as well as the RGB camera fill LED and of course the RGB cameras. In this little plastic case we have the outdoor filters which connect to the depth cameras on the side there. This is the tripod that works as a handle as well, it has a swivel head on there which is adjustable and lockable. It also comes with extendable legs and these can lock into place and then you need to push the button to retract them back into place. To make scanning objects a lot easier, Revo Point also supplied this turntable which gives you uh, varying directions of that turntable as well as speed and that's just a USB connection. The Inspire 2 is super simple to put together and you have various connections type. You can either use the USB cable as you see there, you can use the wireless capabilities of the head unit or you can directly connect it to a mobile phone. This next bit is a really cool idea. This is the USB-C cable, it connects up straight to the back of the unit and it has this little locking thumb screw. The last thing you want to happen while you're scanning an object is for the cable to be pulled out and this little thumb screw avoids that. Great little idea Revo Point. Then the next step is to connect the USB cable to the PC. But Revo Point sent me this optional mobile kit and what that is is a handle which doubles as a battery unit and that also screws into a tripod, the top end screws into a bracket. This phone holder slash bracket is adjustable so it will fit various phone sizes. And that's the plate that goes to the top of that bracket so you can connect up the Reva Point Inspire 2. Now let's check out how easy it is to set up the optional mobile unit. First thing we need to do is screw the handle slash battery pack to the phone holder. To connect the Inspire 2 to the bracket we need to use this mounting plate. That simply just screws onto the bottom of that head unit. You can either spin it on like we did there or the actual uh, bolt has a little lever on there. These are outdoor filters. In the camera world, they're known as ND filters, which is neutral density filters, and that cuts out a whole bunch of light, so if it's a very bright day, it doesn't affect your scan. When you want to connect up the head unit to the bracket, it's just a matter of pushing in the button, and then you can lock it into place. Finally, it's a matter of connecting up the cables to the hand unit or the battery pack, and the Inspire 2 does support both Android as well as iPhone. And there we have it, the whole unit's connected. Couldn't be any simpler than that. If you plan to directly uh, scan into your PC, we will need to use the Revo Metro software. Now let me be very clear here, you will need a decent machine to be able to run the scanner. The Inspire 2 needs a minimum recommendation of an i7, a Ryzen 7 5800, with 16 gigs of RAM and a video card at a minimum an RTX 3050 with 8 gig of RAM. 
You can make the software check to see what is the best way for your machine to scan your objects. You can either use the CPU or the GPU. On screen you can see the specs for my machine and after the report, turns out my CPU is pretty average but my video card is excellent. Good to hear. So once you've done that, just hit apply and we're ready to scan. For my very first test piece, I just grabbed an interesting looking bottle off my shelf in my studio and I'm just putting on these markers and I don't even know I'm going to use them but I thought I'll put them on because it kind of looks like I'm being serious. <laughs> Those of you that follow my channel will know that one of the big things in my reviews is how easy is it to use. And to show total transparency, I found that when I was using the scanner one of the hardest things for me was just to keep the distance right of the scanner from the object. And I struggled a bit trying to align it, but of course this is all user error. It's got nothing to do with the software or the actual hardware. It's just me getting used to how to actually scan. In this particular case, I also worked out if you change the object type to dark because of the type of bottle it was, I just found it a little bit easier to scan. So the second time around, it just seemed to come together a lot easier. I was getting the hang of moving the actual head unit up and down a bit more fluidly and I was getting better results that's for sure and you can see on the right hand side there when it goes orange I'm too close and this is where it was giving me some problems and like I said it's a matter of practice to be able to keep that distance um, consistent I was much more happy with the second run so I thought I'll complete that scan and um, try and see what it looks like all finished yeah I can see some gaps there already but you know like I said this is only my second scan so it's a matter of hitting one click then Revo Metro starts calculating everything it needs to calculate to make sense of what I just scanned. And boy, like I said, my second scan, a bit iffy, but let's see what it, how well it turns out. And I gotta admit, I was pretty impressed with how well it fixed up my bad scanning. Look at that, it's got some really nice detail. Top of the top of the bottle's a bit strange. Off camera, I did another scan and you can see the difference. It's getting there. I'm starting to get the swing of how to use the scanner and how to flow it up and down the object. So the top of the bottle is much better, less gaps in the um, bottle. So we're getting there. Next, I grabbed my Hellboy Star Wars crossover figurine that I made a couple of years ago. And you know what? I'm starting to get my head around it, how to scan, what areas to hit, what to look for on the screen and starting to come together. Off camera, I did a whole bunch of other tests and it gave me enough confidence to proceed with the project that I've been wanting to do for years. Welcome to my photography studio. This is my temporary setup for the scanning in my studio. And now I'd like to introduce you to our latest guinea pig, I mean team member to the Scar Model Geek team. This is Pinky. And they were his hands that you saw in the assembly section of this video. My goal in this build is to turn Pinky into a superhero. So the first thing we need to do is change uh, some of the settings and I'm changing the object type to face. On the left hand side, you can see the two video panels there. Top one is your depth exposure and you can adjust the brightness on that as well as the bottom one, which is what I'll be using while I'm scanning uh, Pinky's face. Pinky's job here was to sit there and look stoic. That's it, that's all we had to do. For this scanning process, I'm just using the wireless feature of the uh, Revo Point Inspire 2. By this stage, my confidence was pretty high with my scanning, so I was fairly confident we were going to get some pretty good results. I was happy with my first scan of Pinky's face, so I hit complete, and this is what we ended up with. This is the raw file, so it hasn't been processed yet. To get a better look of what we've created, you need to hit one click, then hit apply. Now this processing period took about 10 to 15 minutes. I had scanned about a thousand frames. And look at that. Oh, that looks so good. I was so impressed with my first facial um, scan. Really happy with it. It's missing some areas there uh, underneath the beard, which I have to spend a bit more time scanning. But there is a setting that we can adjust to improve that as well. But the detail is great, really happy with what's uh, come out. With the new scan settings, I changed the accuracy to high speed and also the object type to body. And that should fill in some of the areas that we missed. 
Also on the top left hand uh, panel, you can see there's a bright red spot. That means the um, image is too overexposed. So we need to turn that down to around three or maybe even two to get rid of as much of that red highlight as possible. This time around, we thought we'd have a bit of fun and do some crazy facial expressions, because why not? And this is the result we got. How cool is that? From the time we started doing our head scan to the final result that I was happy with was about an hour. I then saved the file and exported it as an SDL file for the next process. This is a 1 6 scale Wolverine figure that I found at CG Trader and I think it cost me about $24 for the full figure. I can't imagine anyone else as Wolverine other than Hugh Jackman. This is the face and I've already cleaned it up in Blender a bit just to, and I streamlined it and um, I think it, I still can't get over how well that scan came out. Yeah, this little bit really is freaky and you know what it reminds me of is that movie Zardos with um, Sean Connery back from 19, I think 1974 it was. That was one bonkers movie. For my first attempt, I used Pinky's fierce expression. And you know, this took me quite a while to uh, do, about 30, 40 minutes, and I just wasn't happy with it. So I went with the very first stoic one, and uh, this really came out well. I was so happy with the way I was able to blend this. This also took about 30 to 40 minutes to complete. I then brought in the save model into Chitterbox to print on my Frozen Mega S. And um, good news is, a lot of this model was pre-supported, but I actually did my own supports on everything bar the arms, which turned out to be a bit of a mistake. Because this is what happened. Uh, sadly, the supports weren't that crash hot on the arms, and uh, one of the arms just popped off the supports into my vat, so I had to redo that piece. But otherwise, the rest of it came up really nice. Had some great detail in it, and at 1 6 scale, he stands at about 300 mil, which is about a foot in height. The detail in the final print was magnificent. Except for the back where the supports were, I'm going to need to do a bit of sanding because it's got some dimples in there. But otherwise, Pinky's expression is just spot on. Again, some more dimples that I'm going to have to sand out out of his um, uh, arms. And a bit of um, maybe some adjustments to put those two legs together. Otherwise, it's about 99% super duper. For sanding resin, I do prefer using the wet system because it stops any dust floating around my desk area. I think it gives me a much better finish and also I use warm water in the process so my fingers don't freeze. Bit of soup glue to put everything together and those of you again who follow the channel will probably notice I use the cheapest soup glue available. I just get it at Bunnings, it's like a packet of five or six for two bucks. To fill some of those joint gaps I use some of this UV resin from Let's Resin. I only need two or three drops of this in a little tin cup and then I use a toothpick to apply uh, the resin to the joints. Then hit it with a UV torch for about five to ten seconds to harden the resin and then it's ready to sand. Back to the cheap R super glue to connect his upper body to his lower body. And then onto the painting. For the base color of his skin, I'm using some of this Barbarian Flesh from Vallejo. And Pinky gets a nice even coat of this flesh tone. And then to bring out some of the muscle detail, I'm using some red brown. I then spray that into the recessed areas of the muscles. And in the eyes and underneath his nose, underneath his chin. Using some blue, I then paint in some of his veins. And I make these as thin as I possibly can. And then using some flesh tone, I give the whole thing a very light spray, sort of like a mist. And this softens down all the shadow areas as well as the veins. I then go in with a lighter version of that flesh and then add highlights to the top of those muscles. And that gives me some really defined uh, body structure. For the pants, just some blue that I pulled out of my shelf that kind of look like jeans. For the hair, I'll use three different colors starting off with raw umber. I make sure that got a nice even coat. 
While Pinky's hair was drying, I used some flat black for his boots. This also got a nice even coat. For his belt, I'm using some saddle brown from Vallejo. Again, a nice even coat. For the second color, I'm using some red leather. Pinky sent me some photos, some front on and some side shots, just to give me an idea of the color scheme within his hair and beard. And he has a touch of redness in there and some grays that are popping out because he's super old now. Bit of trivia for you. I'm turning Pinky into Wolverine and his son in real life is called Logan. His other son is Professor X. Ah, okay, all right, I made that bit up. <laughs> for Wolverine's chest hairs, I just used a weathering pencil. To bring out some of the detail in those blue jeans, I'm using some of this light blue from Ammo, which is a dry brushing paint. Now, I did add a bit more darker blue to that light blue because it was just too light. I've always struggled with jeans looking like jeans, but this is looking convincing. I then hit his boots with some dark grey dry brushing paint from Ammo and some light brown, again, from Ammo uh, to bring out some of the highlights in the belt. For the metal areas that include his belt buckle as well as his dog tags, I use steel from Vallejo. For the bullet wounds, I use some dark red and top them off with some clear varnish. And finally, for his claws, I'm using this chrome metal from Green Stuff World. This stuff is really good. You just have to do a really thick coat of it to make it look chromey. And there he is. Wolverine's just about finished. I just got to make up a base. But yeah, the figurine is done. For the base, I just used Blender, and this was so simple to create. It literally took me under 10 minutes to do. And all it is, is just a whole bunch of basic shapes. I'm just using some cylinders there, which are squashed down, some squares or rather triangles, and just put it all together and exported it as an STL file and send it off to my Bamboo Labs 3D printer. And this took about just under three hours to print, as well as the top, which was about one and a half hours to do. During the design process of the top, I did use the legs from the original file, and that gave me those imprints on the top, so I can secure the figure into place. Off camera, I painted the base black, and now I'm using some of this light metal from Ammo to bring out all the details in that base. At one stage, I was thinking of weathering it, but I kind of opted out of it in the end. I just added the highlights from that uh, light metal and that ended up giving it a nice metallic finish. This Revo Point Inspire 2 I think is going to be such a great addition to my workflow. There's so many ideas that I have of adding um, like greebly, scanning greebly, sc scanning some rocks and things like that just so I've got you know bits and pieces to add to my dioramas. With the Inspire 2 3D scanner I'm going to turn a lot of my friends into some awesome characters I think. I think it's time we go and check out what Wolverine looks like in all his glory. I hope you enjoyed the final result there. Over the coming months, I'll be showing you what I do with this scanner and all the greeblies and all the accessories that I scan and add to my diorama. In the meantime, check out some of the other videos I've done and thanks for joining me. I'll see you next time.